you know what we haven't done? Gone to the toilet live on YouTube? No. We've been beaten to that, I'm sure. Oh. We haven't done anything old school. Nope. www.flashandbladepodcast.net Vidi Prog thing. You've got to fight for what you want, for all that you believe. It's right to fight for what we want, to live the way we please. As long as we have done our best, then no one can do more. And life and Hello there! Welcome to the Flush and Blood podcast. I'm Shimon. And I'm still cuddled up in my scarf, which I love. I also love my Series 18 one that um, Sheila did for me. But it's a bit too warm at the moment for that. So, um, what news? Well, you didn't do a score last time around. No, we got a bit carried away. Yeah. Let us see the judgment of Sinister. Mm. For wow. listen, my judgment was 10 out of 10. Wow. Wow. We also didn't try and find out what Mr. Chris was up to last week. No, I think he was um, otherwise engaged. Shall we see what he's been up to this week? Yeah, go on then. Okay. so okay do you know there's a John Levine Twitter account <laughs> somebody emailed this to me today some some psychotic insane sadist sent me a, a link to uh, oh, it was you wasn't it <laughs> yeah I'm wondering whether we should um, tweet yes. him every time we put an episode out yes In fact, I'll say that again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Hi, John. Hello, Mr. Levine, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Shouldn't be such a silly ass, should you? <laughs> right then. Now. From the world's BBC television's Doctor Who. It's Doctor Who. Did we not review Listen on the last show? Is Time Heist yet to be broadcast? Yes, it is yet to be broadcast. Hmm. And yet here we are about to talk about Doctor Who. What can we be talking about? The fourth Doctor Who and his plucky girl assistant Romana Dratulunda. That's the second Romana Dratulunda, not the first Fred. Romana Dratulunda. She's regenerated <laughs> from the first Romana Dratulunda into the second Romana Dratulunda. With lots of mini sort of Romana Dratulundas going around. Well, one I of them wasn't about? so mini. What was I talking about? I, uh, I, I don't K9. know. K9! He's got laryngitis. What does he need that for, eh? Silly robot with laryngitis. Computer virus. Anyway, they've just fitted the randomizer. 
well, I say they've just fitted. It depends whether you chuck big finish in there afterwards or not. And they land with a wheezing, groaning sound. Ah. I love that sound. In a quarry. Oh, look. Rocks. <laughs> anyway, it's a bit radioactive out there, so they take their pills and they toddle on out. Canine can't really go out there. It's a bit rocky. Shame they didn't think of that later. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And Dick Mills is playing a particular sound effect on loop. And Viewers one. with long noses will remember that sound effect from 1963. December 1963, to be exact. So now they wander around and. This episode is, to all intents and purposes, a two hander. It's just Tom and Lala. There's hardly any incidental music. You occasionally see Tyson, who's had a terrible premonition that he's going to end up dying on Scarra. Seriously, anybody who talks to him. I've had a terrible premonition I'm going to end up dying on Scarra. <laughs> <coughs> We're talking about Destiny of the Daleks, in case you haven't realised it. First episode of the series 17 of Doctor Who. Look, 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 it's there. And if you're very good, since we'll show you a Dalek with bombs on. Oh, yes, a Dalek with bombs on. Here it is. Hang on. And a Davros with a, a sphere on it. Oh, God. No, he's in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All my Davros is in the kitchen. Off. You see, that actually looks quite good. It does. It looks damn slightly better than it did on the telly. It's not just that. I mean, it looks better having the bombs on it than just the basic Dalek without the bombs. Uh, so it's not quite the same colour scheme, but here's a basic one without the bombs. Yeah, you see, I don't like that colour scheme. Anyway, um, they're on Scarrow. Yes. Doctor gets trapped underneath a thing because there's lots of drilling going on. Yep, lots of explosions and things. Mmm. And they see a spaceship land. Drills itself into the ground. Very nice model work. Yep. In fairness. And turns out that it's actually Mavellans. They come along, they lift the thing up off the Doctor. And, um... They come from the planet Disco. They do. <laughs> Sarah Brightman's their prisoner. <laughs> she fell in love with one of them. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's probably a bug hunter. Yeah. So, Destiny of the Daleks. Yep. Some interesting ideas in it. The whole logical impasse. Unfortunately... All elephants are pink. Nelly is an elephant, therefore Nelly is pink. What's wrong with that, Sid? Elephants aren't pink. Right. Daleks aren't machine creatures. As the second Doctor would say, logic merely enables one to be wrong with authority. Exactly. Yeah. Daleks aren't machine creatures. No, I, I do have a potential explanation for this, but carry on. Uh, unless they've got to the point where they've almost got rid of that in their evolution and they're slaves to logic now I, I think I think what they've done is in their attempts to be more efficient at war they've essentially uh, allowed the machine elements to take over I don't think they are purely robotic creatures I think there is still a mutant in there um, but essentially it's no longer the mutant that's the driving force and they've, they've gone down an evolutionary blind alley Fair enough. I mean, there's got to be something biological in there because that's how the Mavellans ended up winning the war. Exactly, because they used a virus to destroy them. Mm. Exactly. So um, this is possibly... No, I'm not going to say possibly. This is my favourite Dalek story. And I'll tell you why. Because um, I'd, I'd watched Doctor Who before. So this was, what, 1979? Mm. I'd watched Doctor Who before, but this was the first story that I can remember watching from beginning to end. It was also the first Target book I bought. It was about, it was about that thick. Uh, and um, so it, Terence this, had really pulled out the stops on that one. Yeah, he must have taken at least an hour to write that one. Ooh. <laughs> um, so Don't tell him, John. No. So this story um, has a really kind of deep place in my heart. I know Genesis of the Daleks is technically a better story, but this, just for pure sentimental reasons, 
Destiny of the Daleks is my favourite Dalek story. I know it has its faults. I know it is severely flawed in many aspects, but I just absolutely adore this story. It's brilliant. Well, my, mine's Planet of the Daleks. Again, technically not as good a story as Genesis of the Daleks. But it's pure Dalek story. Yeah. It's distilled from the essence of all the others and all put together. Yeah. And it's... <clears throat> so... I think you are allowed to have a favourite like that. Yeah, it's just that obviously from from the era that it comes from, which is not everyone's favourite era, and the production values and you know rampant inflation being what it was, blah blah blah. You know, it, it's got it's got some serious budgetary problems, and and you know the Daleks look like absolute crap. Yes. You know, they, they're falling apart. They've got pieces missing. They've got chipped paintwork. None of them look the same. They've all got different colour schemes, but you can. You know, if you imagine that this is a unit of Daleks that's been one formed... One of them's got a very strange back bit to it. One of them's got a very strange back bit to it. Um, in fact, uh, have I got a picture of that one? No, I've got it here somewhere. Another one you mean. Anyway, no, I haven't got it here. Never mind. Um, if you look at Dalek 625, I think it's Dalek 625. <coughs> that's it's called. Yeah. Um, they'll explain why. Um, so... But if you if you imagine that these Daleks were drawn from frontline units and they were all you know their units had been wiped out and they were just kind of thrown together to kind of do this operation, you know, um, it could explain quite a lot. Um, obviously, the logical thing we've discussed, and I don't think when I, when I'm talking about uh, the Daleks have allowed their logic to take over, I don't just mean the machines inside the casings. You know, we know that there are two enormous battle fleets facing each other in space, and then nobody's fired a single shot for decades. Um, you know, I'm thinking there must be some kind of electronic computer in there controlling the movements of the fleet. So essentially, they've just they've gone down this blind alley, but they've allowed themselves to be controlled too much. If they'd if they'd allowed some of their hatred maybe to drive them as they have before, they probably could have won the war. You know, but um, obviously, as we know, it doesn't end up well for them. But it's just, it's an interesting position for the Daleks to be in to be kind of uh, the hunted ones for a change. Um, it's an interesting story from the perspective that it reinforces a lot of the previous Dalek tropes. You know, they're using slave labour. Um, they're, they're very callous, you know. Uh, but obviously you've got... Well, the that's because it's the, written by Terry Nation. Well, yeah, and you've got the return of Davros. And, you know, OK, so the, the mask was reused and the actor's... Was it David Goodison? David Goodison. He's not... He's lovely, he, was, he was lovely, David Goodison. Met him. Yeah. I, he's no Michael Wisher, but he didn't do a bad job, you know. I mean, they didn't modulate his voice properly. No. And, and Davros's chair obviously had suffered badly yeah. during during the centuries because the navigation was slightly off. <laughs> um, but this is, if 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 anyone if 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 anyone ever asked me what's my sort of guilty pleasure, I'd say Destiny of the Daleks is my guilty Doctor Who pleasure. Why is it I... your guilty pleasure? You, I mean, you've you've made a very good case for it. Mm. And. I, I love the whole, you know, scissors, rock, stone kind of thing that Romana and the Doctor do. And, you know, it's it's an interesting exploration of um, almost, I'm probably thinking a bit too much now, but it's an interesting exploration of what could happen to the human race if we allow computers to rule our lives. Mm -hmm. Because it takes away the intuition. You know, what is it the Doctor says? Make mistakes and confuse the enemy. Mm. You know? Um it's it's not as quotable as Genesis of the Daleks, but I just it's just it's my favourite Dalek story, and you know I'm not going to apologise for that. I just I just love this story. I know it's not perfect, and you've got Tyson, uh, the actor was you know okay, not the best, you know, but he's still going strong. He keeps turning up in Derek. I mean, Which you can imagine though that you know that the reason that he is is he maybe he's shell shocked, maybe he's got PTSD or something. You know, you can yeah, I mean you can rationalise all of this. I even wrote I even wrote a fan story, a, a kind of like a prequel to Destiny of the Daleks, and it was uh, written from the perspective of a of a group of people on board a uh, a cruise liner in space, and it had been hijacked, and these people ended up on Scaro, um, kind of you know as part of the sort of slave you know operation. I can't remember exactly what it was about, but that was kind of the rough lines of it. But this is this is a story that I perhaps don't watch as often as other stories, but when I do, it's always with a sense of um... cozy glee. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, nostalgia for for many reasons. Yeah, as I say, it was the first one that I watched all the way through. It was the first book I bought, and from there on, I haven't really looked back. So, Destiny of the Daleks is a definite, a definite 
place marker in my Doctor Who history. Fair enough. I, I, I'm very, very fond of it. I remember seeing the trailer for it. I also remember seeing the trailer beforehand. The, the Doctor awake. He's asleep in the police box. and For warders for armed, now forget. <laughs> Tom <laughs> takes it, despite what people say, Tom takes it very seriously. Yeah. It's the Daleks. They, 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 it's, they, people always quote that line, you know, if you're meant to be the, the superior life form, why don't you try climbing up after me? It's a you genuine know. line. It's yeah. genuinely basically saying, oi. You can't do it, can you? It's silly, but. Yeah, but I, I, love, I love some of the camera angles on this as well. When, oh, when, yeah, Ken Grieve, the director, was doing a superb job. You know, looking, looking up at the Daleks, and, and especially when they're moving around, it, it actually brings, they're only short, but it actually makes them look bigger than they are. Hmm. You know, he, he, did some, um, he did some very good work with what he was given. Oh, I ve very, very much so. <laughs> Apparently he and Douglas Adams t went, went to Paris whilst they were shooting um, City of Death. For no other reason, they just wanted to go over for a meal and a piss-up. <laughs> and the, the, they weren't very popular. I can't imagine why. Mm, no. Everyone else is rushing around Paris trying to film City of Death. And there they go. Having lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the DVD is very good. Yep. Um, I think is it, are there all the Prime ads on that one? I can't remember. Yes, they are. Um, hang on, Prime computer adverts. Uh, yeah, with Tom Baker and Lala Ward. Yep. Yeah, they're on here. Oh, and of course, it's Lala's first outing as Romana on screen. It's City of Death. I think so. City of Death. Sorry, no. Creature from the Pit is her first one as in production. I think, oh right, so. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Destiny of the Daleks. I mean, I like series 17. I really do. Um, I get it. And this, Tom's taking it seriously. You may not think so, but he is. He's trying to ramp up the threat the Daleks present. Yeah. And he does it excellent. Excuse me, excellently. And I think, I think even, even in stories where the Doctor could be accused of not taking things seriously... I, I think it we've it's been demonstrated that he's he's it's all a bluff. It's it's all a, a shield he's putting up. He's he's presenting this kind of facade of you know bluster to allow him time to think. Uh, yes, and also it makes the enemies a think he's stupid. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, Patrick uh, Tra Patrick Trout, the second Doctor was exceptional at that. Yeah. Everybody everybody totally underestimated him. Oh, something we've got to talk about afterwards. Um, and and it, that's the whole point. It's a whole underestimation. Um, the Mavellans are very much a product of their time. Yeah. The whole design of them and whatever. This spaceship set is great. Yep. Though, why they've got seats? Uh, I, 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 would... I think yeah. it's because they're humanoid yeah. and they need to pass themselves off as humanoid. Or it could be that... Um, let, me, let me just extrapolate slightly here. Maybe they were a humanoid you know flesh and blood race that began to like the Daleks kind of you know unlike the Cybermen always enhance themselves and along the way they've become fully robotic and so the seats are just a kind of you ask yourself this question why do the Cybermen have seats in Revenge of the Cybermen unless they I, stole I, the I, spaceship I that wasn't their, their ship yeah it, but maybe the Revelans it's just a kind of you know well we've always had seats <laughs> Either that, or like I said, they're, they're yeah. trying to pass themselves off. They they might need something like that. Yeah. Um. Very fond of Destiny of the Daleks. Some of the cliffhangers. That are, I mean, I love the interrogation scene with with Romana. The Daleks are just completely. I mean, Roy Skelton's having a whale of a time. Absolutely. And I, we, we've mentioned before, but the whole um. The. the, the uh, version of Destiny of the Daleks, which is on YouTube, where it's voiced that they've taken clips. Of Roy Skelton voicing Zippy. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it's bloody creepy. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we can find a link to that. I don't know. Um, yeah. Basically, Destiny of the Daleks is a big plus. Now it is time for the judgment of Sinister. Oh. I didn't know we were doing a judgment on the older stories. Yeah. Um, it it for, for, it can only be it can only be a ten out of ten. I know it's not. I know it's not perfect. But for me, this is my story. 
And, and that, that was, was Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Now then, boys and girls, uh, um, the next time we're going to be looking at a Doctor Who story, Sinister is now going to tell us what story we're going to look at. Oh, an old story. Yeah. Do you know, I'd like to look at Carnival of Monsters. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. Now, pay attention. Freedom of the Daleks. Mm. Timetunnelmedia.bandcamp.com I'll say that again. Timetunnelmedia.bandcamp.com It's one episode at the moment. Um, and it stars the second Doctor. Actually, it stars Chris Thompson as the second Doctor. And his impersonation is uncanny. I, I mean, I've said this to him, he needs to be a bit older. He, he, in himself. So his voice gets a natural timber to it. Um, mm. But it, he, he's utterly superb as Troughton. He's done the um, Pandorica speech. Right. As, as a second Doctor, and it's brilliant. You almost couldn't tell the difference. Are there but any... I've heard a few Pandorica speeches now, the 10th Doctor one, the 9th Doctor one. I was going to say, are there, any, are there any Doctors that haven't done it yet on third, YouTube? Uh, third, well, I've done the first, not very well. Um, okay. Third, fourth, I've heard of it, not very, it's not very good. Okay. Um, I haven't heard the fifth. And um, Staveson's done it himself. He might have done, um, but no. Um, yes, this this Dalek story, Freedom of the Daleks. Uh, it's basically what happens after Evil of the Daleks, right? And before um, Children of the Revolution. The only other quibble I would have with it is the music. Now, ordinarily, the music would be great, perfectly fine. However, because this is a Troughton story. It feels too modern. Right. I personally would have gone for some of the free-to-use library music that they used to use and, and just chucked that in. Yes, it's familiar, but that's the whole point. Um, I wouldn't mind hearing that rescored using library music. It, it, it really is superb. Their Daleks are spot on. Um, the acting's great. The script is great. Great cliffhanger. Um, really, really looking forward to more from those guys. Uh, the, yeah, hats off. Hats off. Yes, quite so. Yeah. Well, there we go. Don't know what we're going to I've got some Marvel books, but I haven't read them yet. One's X Men, one's Captain Marvel. Or okay. Marvel. Um, the X Men book's quite an important one within the canon. Next time we do a show. Yes. I'm hoping to be able to review my my Who box. Oh, from John Hadlow. Yes. I was tempted, but A, ain't got the money, and B, the t-shirt wouldn't fit. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that, but um, maybe we could do a live opening. If you wish. If you wish, yeah, I'm happy to, as long as you're happy to wait to do it. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, cool, we'll do that. Um, thank you. Um, have you been anywhere near that shop yet? Which shop? The one that sells the Dalek pilots. Um, no, it's near where I work. Don't worry, it's on my list. It's on my list. Yeah, but so are your enemies. Well, this is a slightly shorter list. Things I like. <laughs> Biscuits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Biscuits, cats, beans on toast, Daleks. There you go. <laughs> Oh, they my wife. I'm, I'm quite fond of my wife. Are you? That's nice. And possibly your children. Remember the sisterettes? I've forgotten about them. Yeah, you see. You might want to take them out of the chimney at some stage. Yeah, it wouldn't be so bad if I had a chimney. They'd that's what worries they'd, me, they'd quite frankly. Up. <laughs> so, time to say goodbye. Time to say goodbye. I love that song. 
by John Levine hasn't covered it though oh no maybe he should fuck off <laughs> toodles <laughs> To fight for what you want, for all that you believe. It's right to fight for what we want, to live the way we please. As long as we have done our best, then no one can do more. And life and love and happiness are well worth fighting for. They're well worth fighting for.